What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher and today we are back on my 1939 Lincoln Zephyr two-door conversion project. This was a four-door car. We are turning it into a two-door three-window coupe and uh, last time we were on this project we got the uh, driver's side pillar cap welded in. This video is going to be on finishing all of the door jams where it does not line up underneath, um, welding up all these seams, welding up our inner bracing, as well as welding on the other pillar cap. We are gonna use TIG welding for this side. We did that other side with MIG. We're gonna talk about the differences of TIG welding and MIG welding, doing this type of repair where you're not able to gain access to the back. How do we control distortion? What are we doing? Um, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Let's get into this video. All right, before we get started, I have a huge announcement. This is a very special event. We are gonna be hosting a metal shaping class at Sosa Metalworks in Las Vegas this November 9th to 12th. Get your tickets now. We are having special guest Craig Rodsmith. If you do not know who that is, he is a world famous motorcycle builder, just like Christian Sosa. And the two of them together are gonna to be hosting this class with me as well in Vegas, November 9th to 12th. There's only limited seats. So Craig Rodsmith, he is a super wild guy. He's an extremely talented metal shaper. He does mostly hand metal shaping with aluminum race bikes, hand built, beautiful bikes. His bikes are in museums as are Christians. These two together is, is gonna be amazing. I've never met Craig Rodsmith before and I can't wait to meet him. The three of us are gonna be helping you guys in a class November 9th to 12th in Las Vegas. Super excited. Okay, let's get back into this video. All the links are in the description to get in on this class. Register now. They're gonna go fast. It's gonna be a great time. Three full days of metal shaping with the three of us, as well as a huge barbecue the night before the class. So it'll be Thursday night, Friday all day, Saturday all day, Sunday all day. We'll building, we will be building motorcycle tanks from scratch, doing the whole design process, everything from start to finish. Or if you choose Two, you can do a slightly different project and we'll help you in whatever you want to do, but mostly we're going to tailor this class to motorcycle gas tanks from scratch, from design to creation in three days. Hope to see you there. Let's get back on the Zephyr.
So I just kind of unhook this door top here and now I can tip it in and out a little bit. But I, what I want to do is I want to expand since we, we took this um, door frame and pushed it in a little bit to line it up with the pillar. I also want to do the same with the door top. Uh, it needs it as well. So I'm going to try and hold the door frame in where I like it and kind of pull out on it while I try and get a tack that might be harder than I think it is. <laughs>
All right, where are we at? We've got the door top welded, smoothed into here. You may have seen I did kind of just back that up with a uh, bit of a copper backer um, and just filled it up with MIG. Kind of a cheat, but I think that's totally fine. Um, smoothed all this in. You see that I welded to the actual hinge here. This is a unibody car and these hinges are welded to the door from factory. These are hot riveted on and actually welded as well. So um, that's why I did just kind of weld it into the door because it was welded into the door before we cut that off. So this side is bolted, of course, and uh, it does have some adjustment. Um, I did smooth all this out. We got this all welded up. Front area did get welded. Um, I did take my time and really try and line up this drip rail as best I could. There's a little bead roll on the inside here. Um, just tried to line that up by tapping it around as I was kind of tacking it and welding it. Turned out okay. Um, yeah, next up, I am still going to kind of clean up this area a little bit, weld this to that. Oh, I don't know if you guys could even see. Maybe. Um, I'm going to clean this area up, weld this, and then the pillars are done. Uh, there's a bit of the inner structure here that has to be welded as well. This all had to be dissected to allow the pillar to move when we had to tip it out. So something to keep in mind. I don't know if I actually showed that uh, on earlier videos, but um, I did strategically cut through areas of this inner structure so that I could easily weld and grind it back up, um, which is now. Once we get this all buttoned up, I will go to the other side. Oh, just about tripped. Um, I'll go to the other side and do the other pillar cap with TIG welding and uh, we'll fit and weld that up. Uh, newsflash, we got the trunk lid. Uh, thank you so much, Wayne. Uh, so stoked, Intergalactic Custom Shop in uh, England. Uh, just unreal dude to deal with. He was just so quick, upfront, honest, and uh, just amazing. Here it is. This is all the way from England. Thank you, Wayne. So stoked. He's an incred incredible guy, so I'm actually gonna put the link in the description for his place. Um, you can check them out and, uh, yeah, let's keep going on the pillars.
All right, let's get a closer look at this thing. Got the post all welded up. Kind of did a little extra on the edge there, make it look nice for when the interior goes in. Um, didn't get too picky on the inside here, just made sure it was all stitched up with solid weld, ground down smooth. Got this corner kind of cut all done. Same thing with up here. All pretty simple stuff, just tacking with the MIG. And uh, there it is. So, what's next? We've got this done, we've got this done, we've got this done. The next part is gonna be the front of this door post. This is still a little bit floppy, and I believe that this part is a little bit too tipped in. You can kind of see how it does that a little bit. So we're gonna put the door back on and Clico the door flat to the pillar, and then we'll cut this tack and then readjust this area, start tacking this, and then we'll be done.
All right, so got the drip rails all buttoned up, got the front of this door all tied in and looking proper now. Um, this was kind of too far in, so we had to readjust all that. I'm super happy with the way the door has turned out. There's still more work to do, but I'm gonna hop onto the other side and get the pillar cap on with TIG welding. You're gonna see right now that, um, actually I'll try and get a little closer so you get a better look. But um, like the other side, if you remember, this kind of, as it rolls in, it ends up needing to stretch a bit. So it ended up kind of diving this. So we're gonna have to add a little bit of stretch in this area and then just kind of tune it up a little bit. The process with TIG welding something in is slightly different because we have to be a lot more careful about our gaps. When we, like on the other side, it's okay if I have a little bit of a gap on a MIG welding, but when you're TIG welding something in, you want as tight of a fit as possible so that those two pieces are kind of fighting each other and not allowing it to dive with the heat. Um, the other thing we can do is control distortion a little bit by turning up our gas flow and just you like just um, doing small sections at a time instead of running the entire thing. Like if I was to do this door, which I did, I ran the entire thing all at once to have a nice even distribution of heat and then it shrunk evenly and then we were able to planish it out. But in this area, we are not able to planish it out. So we're gonna want to try and reduce the amount of heat that we put in it. So I'll probably end up welding in short amounts while adding a little bit more gas flow and trying to uh, um, just keep the metal and the surrounding area as cool as possible.
Hold up. All right, so I've got the pillar cap tacked in. Like I said, I just wanted as tight of a gap as possible. Um, this way on a convex shape, it's not gonna wanna sink because it's pushing against each other. You know, you want those tight gaps. Um, anyway, any time that you spend fitting is always worth it when you're doing this kind of stuff. Same thing here. I just kind of made sure that everything was lining up really nice and that the gaps were tight. So um, now I'm gonna weld it and, uh, and I was kind of using bare hands, you saw that is, is also just so that I can feel the heat. Like I don't want too much heat in this. So I'll tack and kind of pause there for a second because there's post flow gas on a TIG welder. You can set how long it is. Um, I've got it for just a few seconds, but um, about 40 cubic feet per minute um, gas flow. That way you're kind of blowing a lot of air, or not air, but gas, shielding gas to help cool it. So I've got this really big cup on there. I think that's a number 12 um, and a gas lens. They, they allow you to stick your tungsten out a little bit further and flow more gas to cool the weld. So I'm just gonna go, you'll see how I methodically kind of just jump around a little bit to control the amount of heat. Um, normally, like I said, if I were doing an entire piece with full access, I would just weld the whole thing and, uh, and whatever happened to it, I would be able to bang that back out with hammer and dolly or planishing hammer, but in a no access situation like this, I'm a little bit more worried about the heat distortion. So I am trying to keep it as cool as possible using the post flow gas and uh, just kind of jumping around.
All right, check it out. Worked out really well with the TIG welder. Like I said, these will be shrinking a little bit and trying to sink down. This is not like a thousand percent without Bondo. There's gonna be a little bit of a low right in the middle. Um, right here, I did weld it fully because it's so close to a very strong, tight edge. So this wasn't an issue. There's no warping in there. This worked out really well down at the bottom here. Um, everything kind of welded in quite nicely actually. So very happy with the repair. Very happy the Zephyr is still cooking along. Very happy we got that trunk lid off of Wayne. Um, also, yeah, the class in Vegas coming up with Craig Rodsmith and Sosa. Uh, Christian Sosa, it's going to be amazing. If you guys can get in on that, I'll see you there. The other thing that's coming up is Brent from Half-Ass Customs is coming to stay with me again for a few days. We're going to thrash on the ramp truck. We've got a bunch of exciting stuff happening with that coming up. Um, wheels, air ride, uh, like more plumbing, kind of wiring, all kinds of stuff. We're going to, I'm not sure, we end up getting so much work done when Brent comes. So definitely check him out, Half-Ass Customs. Um, I'll put his link in the description. The Links for the class will be in the description as well as links to Wayne as well. Um, thanks everybody for watching. Really appreciate your support everyone. If you want to support the channel another way, the custom crew membership is $5 a month. Gets you 15% off of the merch store, a little badge by your name when you're commenting down below. And if you haven't yet, please just throw a comment down there. Helps the algorithm, like the video. And if you wanna see more, make sure you hit notifications. We'll see you guys later. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.